And my dear brothers who have come from all over the world to this wonderful basilica, which has been built over the tomb of St. Paul, to be ordained as a deacon for the great preacher, the apostle, was very much a person who served the word of God. It's for you to serve that word too, which you will serve in many ways. So on this very happy day for you, for your diocese, for religious communities, for your families, through the celebration of the sacrament of order, we are deepening our exploration and discovery of the nature of service in our Catholic community. Our starting point is the image of Christ the servant. The Christ who comes to serve and not to be served is the Messiah who leads us to salvation. The very nature of the sacrament of order changes the recipient at the very core of his being. So today, you, my brothers, are being ordered to service. From now on, you live to serve. It provides the very firm basis of Christian ministerial priesthood to which you will be ordained in good time. Without this foundation, priesthood is devoid of much of its need and would be like a house built on sand, ready to fall at the slightest strength. <laughs> a powerful gospel passage helps us to grasp this. It's the one which we have received from the church today, where Jesus teaches his disciples how to behave. Do not parade your goods, your good deeds, before men. And again, when you pray, he says, go into your private room and shut the door. Do not put on a gloomy face when you're passing, but screw yourself up so that no one will know you are passing. What Jesus is telling us is that the best way to serve others and to make an impact is not to be rash about it but to go about your ministry quietly and with dedication. Rewards will come later. Maybe when Elijah returns, who knows? But our Father in heaven knows, and that's all that matters. We can surely trust him to keep his word. But today is not about you. You are not being ordained to make you better. It may, in fact, make you worse. Setting high goals for yourself can result in failure all the more easily. You are not being brought into the, the acting so that you will become noticed, so that you will be a minor celebrity. Your service of the poor must only result in God's grace to God, not yours. Today is a celebration of the body of Christ as Jesus the Son. Christ is passing his mantle to you, just as Elijah passed his to Elisha, so that Christ the servant may be visible in his church. When the early church was suffering growing pains and clearly not attending the needs of its people, the people in its care, in particular the widows of the Hellenistic Greek-speaking community, it elected seven worthy men to attend to them, to serve the table, and that is why they were appointed, and you are their successors, you are appointed to this task. Jesus expressed his own love that his disciples by washing their feet. And every wound is thirsty, the Pope washes the feet of twelve poor men, I was going to say, but now we say twelve poor men and women of Rome. And to do this, 
he dresses in a dialectic, the deep in his vessel. Today, you will be dressed in a dialectic. You will put on Christ, as St. Paul was so fond of saying. You will get dressed up in Christ. And for you today, the dalmatic is that symbol. It's the sign of Christ the servant. Service or ministry is at the heart of what we do as Christians. It's our culture. Service at the heart of Christian leadership and priesthood. It underpins it. And today, even though it's a warm here in the moment, I wear a dalmatic under my vestments, under my tractable, to remind myself of this. Leadership and service don't always go well together, of course. And Jesus reminds us in another place that the kings of the Gentiles lord it over their subjects. But he says to his followers, not so you. Not so you. The symbolic value, you see, is the deacon role. Attending at the table of the Eucharist, breaking the word and expounding the gospel and the preaching is empty and deficient of meaning unless it's based on service to the people of God. Your role is to serve them, and through them you serve Christ. Serving the word of God in Scripture or the word made flesh in the Eucharist takes time. It takes time to sit with people who are searching. It takes time and effort to turn the pages of Holy Scripture and to humbly offer an explanation. It takes something to go that extra mile. Literally, in the case of many of you, as you will exercise your diaconate. In the ordination ceremony, you will be called by the people to serve. You'll be invited to take time with the community, the people of the community here at the Baker College in Rome, and in those parishes where you may serve the sun. You will be invited to take time with them in unexpected ways. And your learning, your life experience, your prayer, and your personal gifts have brought you to this point that told you to offer yourselves in service. And the invitation from your bishop or religious superior to study here at the Vega is, as in some ways, being like going into a private space, very and Far away from your families, your communities, and from the busy lives that you led until a few years ago. Where this will eventually be, of course, is God's wisdom. But you can be sure that it will be a life rich and blessed. Being a deacon reminds the church community that its fundamental purpose is to serve God and its people. One of the curses of modern life is the pressure on time. There's never enough of it. Life is always one thing after another, and it's difficult to catch it up. The call to service goes against this trend. It invites you to sit and to take time with another and look at the story of God's saving power amongst his people. Having deacons in its midst will remind the community here at the Baker College that it is important for its members and for the world of service. Why do we always think that service is about rushing around and doing things? If you're going to be the source of the earth, you don't have to do anything. It's you that gives flavor by being yourself. The light shining out, the good news of our salvation is Jesus Christ. Essentially, the good news of our salvation is Jesus Christ. It essentially requires that you be a gospel person who lives the word and doesn't just talk about it. Your light will shine amongst your community if you allow the God of the Scriptures to enter into your heart. So my brothers, use this period as a deacon 
nor to his may be. To make the word of God which you will discover to be ever fresh as you turn the pages of your Bible and let it sink into your being so that when you are invited to explain those words the listener will not only hear your words but receive the grace of God made flesh the grace of that word living in you. So may you take heed the scholarly monk watch over you and keep you close to the word of God which he serves through scholarship and prayer. May you serve God through your preaching and in your chant. And may many of you serve the word of God in her womb and by her unfailing fidelity watch over you and show you what it means to be a disciple of her son.